day of Simon. We're going to open up with the book of 1 Maccabees 2. 1 Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 15. 1 Maccabees 2 verse 15. Read that. First book of Maccabees chapter 2 verse 15. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. You see, you, what did he say? Read that again, verse 15. The first book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 50. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. So now this is Marathias, our forefather, is talking to his son. He says they must be zealous for the law and give their lives for the covenant of their fathers. Go ahead. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in the time. You see what the commandment was? He says, call to remembrance what acts our forefathers did in their time. Meaning, you must remember the acts of our forefathers, their righteous acts. You understand? To, to defend this Bible. Read. Let's see one again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 51. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall you receive great honor and an everlasting name. So now when we call to remembrance the acts of our forefathers that they did in their time, it says we will what? We will receive great honor and an everlasting name because we would be what? Walking after the footsteps of our forefathers that came before us. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Read that part again, verse 51. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Mm -hmm. So shall we receive Great honor and an everlasting name. So Marathias is telling his son, says, we must remember the acts our forefathers did in their time. Meaning, remember the past. Remember your history. Don't abandon who you are. Know your history. Learn it. You understand? Teach it to your children and to your people. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 7. Because our forefather Moses, he spoke about the same thing. Okay? Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. Consider the years of many generations. Read. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. You see what the Lord is saying through Moses? He says, remember the days of old. Remember your history. Consider the years of many generations. The acts our forefathers did in their time. He says, ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell you. Because those fathers, those elders, they are back this day. That's why it says, as thy father, as thy father, and he will show thee. You see that part right there? As thy father, and he will show thee. Because those fathers are back. They are on the seat corners, teaching the people the laws of God. Bringing to remembrance to the people who they are according to the Bible. And that we must submit ourselves to the laws of God. That's what that's what Moses is saying. That's a heavy verse right here. That's some heavy stuff right here. Okay, read it again. Verse seven. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Mm -hmm. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Watch this. Give me Job 8 and 8. Job chapter 8, verse 8. Because our forefather Job, he spoke about the same thing. So our forefathers, they were very in tune with their history. You understand? Watch this. Job 8, verse 8. The book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Of the what? And prepare thyself to search of the former age. He says, for inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. That's the days of all. You understand? Remember the acts your forefathers did in their time. So the prophets, they all spoke the same thing. You understand? They spoke the same thing. They always commanded us to do what? To be aware of our history, to remember it, to be in tune with our history. You understand? Because in captivity, the nation that taught us their history and commanded us to destroy ours and forget our history. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 44.1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 44, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 44, verse 1. 
Let us now praise famous men mm -hmm. and our fathers that beget us. You see that thing? So those famous men is our forefathers that beget us. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Adam, Moses, Nehemiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Baruch. Those are our forefathers that beget us. Come on. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. From the time of Genesis, the most that God used our forefathers to show forth his glory. Noah, Shem. Okay, come on. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Men renowned for their power. You see that thing? Men Give renowned. Hold on, wait. Men renowned for their power. Is there such as, as such as did bear rule in their kingdoms? Because we what we rule over great kingdoms once before. That's why it says such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, plural. You understand? Give me that in Ezra chapter four verse twenty. Ezra chapter four verse twenty. You see our history is uh, listen. There's no history that surpasses ours. There's no people on this earth that surpasses us. We are the greatest people that walk this earth. We are the cream of the crop. Watch this. Ezra chapter four verse twenty. Read that. The book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 20. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which have ruled over all countries which have beyond won. the river. Ruled over all countries beyond the river. He says, which have ruled over all countries, over all countries, which did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power. That's what we read in Sirach. Come on. And told tribute and custom was paid unto them because the nations paid us tax they paid us toll tribute and custom all of that was paid unto us why because we was in power we bear rule in our kingdoms when the most High god was with us when we kept his commandments and glorified him on earth we ruled over all nations on earth go back to sarah 44 now sarah 44 verse 2 again now read verse 3 sarah 44 verse 3 the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verse 3. Right. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, mm -hmm. men renowned for their power. Come on. Giving counsel by their understanding. Right. Clearing prophecies. You see that thing? Those forefathers are back this day. You understand? That's why you be very, very mindful on how you deal. You understand? The most High God sets somebody over you, even if it's a soldier. You better be, you better watch yourself. You understand? Because those forefathers, they are back. Your Nehus, your Habakkuk, they are back. Your Micah, they are all back. You understand? This is true. You understand? Your Judith, your Sarah, you understand? Your Miriam, they are back. Your Shifra, your Pua, they are all back. Judith, they are back this day. Understand that? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44, verse 3. Read. Such as did rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding, and declaring prophecies. You see that thing? It says men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding of the scriptures and declaring prophecies. Go ahead. Come on. Leaders. Of the people by their councils. You see that thing? That's how they were leaders of the people, by their council. Where did the council come from? The Most High. The Most High is the one that gave counsel to these men that he set up. Go ahead. And by their knowledge of learning meat for the people. You see that thing? And by their knowledge, by their knowledge of learning meat for the people, it's good for the people. Okay, come on. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. He says, wise and eloquent in their instructions. How did they instruct the people? They instructed the people by what? By their knowledge of learning. By their knowledge. The laws of God. They didn't think of nothing. They what? They followed counsel that the Lord gave them. And they took the same counsel they gave it to the people. You understand? So that all Israel may understand and learn this book. Okay? Watch this. Go back to 2nd 1 Maccabees 2, verse 51 again. 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 51. 
First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 51. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Mm -hmm. So shall you receive great honor and an everlasting name. You see that thing? So we must always remember the acts our forefathers did in their time. So all our forefathers, great men, leaders of the people by the understanding. You understand? That's why you see all the nations on earth, they envy us. They want to be like us. You understand? The way they move, everything that they do, they get it from the Bible. Everything. And I'm not saying that. No, everything. They get it from this book. You understand? If you think of people like Beethoven, you think Beethoven was a German man. No. Beethoven was a black man. You understand? During the dark ages, Beethoven that came with classic music and all that, that was a black man right there. You understand? Beethoven, King Arthur, Farrakhan. Those are our forefathers. You understand? Those are our forefathers. And Mozart. Don't see all these white people that you... Mm -mm, those are our forefathers. You understand? Watch this. Um, give me, let's open up now. Give me First Maccabees 13 now. First Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 1. First Maccabees 13 and verse 1. We're going to start there. All right. First book of Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 1. Read. Now, when Simon heard that Typhron had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea, and destroy it. So now Simon, Simon is, is Marathiah's son. Simon is one of Marathiah's son. Typhon was a Greek general. Okay, let's go to First Maccabees 2. First Maccabees 2, verse 1. Okay, First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 1. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Right? In those days arose Marathias, Marathias, the son of John. In those days arose Marathias. Okay, come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. In those days arose Marathias, the son of John, mm -hmm. the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Joari from Jerusalem and dwelt in Mordin. So Marathias, now we're going to... the we're going to see the list of the sons of that Marathias had, which we read about in First Maccabees 2, verse 50 does. Okay, come on. And he had five sons. Mm -hmm. Joanan called Cadiz. So he had Joanan called Cadiz. Simon. Simon called Thassi. Mm -hmm. Simon, that's the same Simon we are reading about in chapter 13. Go ahead. Judas who was called Maccabees. Really? Eliza, called Avaran. And Jonathan, whose surname was Afus. Afus, Afus, And Jonathan, whose surname was Afus. So he had Judah, you said he had uh, Simon called Thassi, Judas was called Maccabees, Eliza called Avaran, and Jonathan, whose surname was Afus. So let's go back. Let's go back to um, First Maccabees chapter thirteen. Okay, First Maccabees chapter thirteen, verse one again. First book of Maccabees chapter thirteen, verse one. Mm -hmm. Now, when Simon heard that Typhron had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and destroy it. So now Simon is Marathias' son, you understand? At this point, Judah Maccabee and his brethren, they are dead now. The only one that's left is Jonathan and himself. Jonathan has been taken captive or hostage, you understand, by Trifon. So now watch this. Uh, give me, go back to First Maccabee real quick. First Maccabee 2. First Maccabee chapter 2, read verse 49. First Maccabee 2 verse 49, watch this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 49. Mm -hmm. Now, when the time drew near that Matthias should die, he said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction, and the wrath of indignation. So it says, Now, I need to read it in the right context. It says, now, when the time drew nigh, the time drew near that Matthias should die, he said unto his sons, 
Now he has pride and rebuke God has said. And the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. So he's about to die. Now he's going to give instructions to his son of what they must do when he's no longer around. Go ahead. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law mm -hmm. and give lives for the covenant of your fathers. He says, give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. What is the covenant? Give me that in Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verse 10. And give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Okay. This is why that is why we are all here to give our lives for the covenant of our fathers. Is that is that Psalm 78 verse 10? The book of Psalms of the 78 verse 10. They kept not the covenant of God. They did what? And refused. They kept not the covenant of God. They kept not the days of our fathers. This is they kept not the covenant of God. Go ahead. And refused to walk in his law. And refused to walk in his law. So the covenant is the law. So go back to First Maccabees now, chapter two, and verse fifty again. First book of Maccabees, chapter two, verse fifty. Read. Now, therefore, sons, be ye zealous for the law, and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. And for and give your lives for the law of your fathers. He's not talking to everyone. He's talking to what? He's talking to his son. You understand? Letting you know this covenant is not for everybody. It's only for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why he's saying, and give your life for the covenant of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the forefathers before them. Okay? Jump down to verse 63 now. Now verse 64. Read verse 64. <laughs> First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 64. Come on. Wherefore, ye my son, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. Ray. For by it, in glory. You see what he's saying right there? It says, Wherefore, ye my son, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. The only time the Most High God will see you as a man is if you keep God's commandment. He says, For by it, he shall obtain glory. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? So all we need is a few good men who will keep God's commandments, who will not bow down to the woman. That's what the Lord is looking for. You see what happened to Adam? Because he listened to the voice of his wife. Look where we're at now. You understand? Ray? Come on. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. So Simon is the same Simon that we read about in chapter 13. He says, and behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Okay, so Simon was the brains of the operation. Read that again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 65. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Read. Give ear unto him always. He shall be a father unto you. You see that thing? It says, give ye unto him only, he shall be a father unto you. Because every father knows the type of children they've got. Every father knows them. You understand? Every father knows the type of spirit each child has. You understand? Same. Likewise, in the truth, we know what type of spirit you, you, are, you are, what type of spirit you are moving in, what type of spirit you are, and how we must deal with you based on that spirit that you have. You understand? Because all of you are not going to be the same. So we have to deal with you according to the spirit that you have and build you up according to that spirit. Go ahead. As for Judas Maccabees, he had been mighty and strong even from his youth up. Right. Let him be your captain to fight the battle of the people. So now what he's telling them is that, listen, now when it comes to, when it comes to Judah Maccabees, he says, he had been a mighty, they had been mighty and strong. Meaning what? He was the tough one. Okay? Even from his youth up, let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people. Go ahead. The 67. Take also unto you all those that observe the law. You see what he's saying? And avenge. It says, take also unto you all those that observe the law. So many the people that you must surround yourself with. Is those that observe the law, those that keep God's commandments. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. 
and avenge ye the wrong of your people. And do what? Avenge ye the wrong of your people. So this is the instruction that uh, Marathi is giving to his son. He says, take unto you all those that observe the law and avenge, avenge. You see that word right there? Avenge. Meaning the most that God is about vengeance of those enemies that what that malign us. Our enemies that speak here of us, our enemies that oppress us, the most that God is about vengeance upon them. It says, avenge ye the wrong of your people. You understand? But I want to deal with something right there. You see what it says? Take also unto you all those that observe the law. Give me that in first Maccabees 4, verse 41. Watch this. This is the series that Judah Maccabee, our forefather, moved in. Watch this. First Maccabees 4, verse 41. Read that. First book, of, first book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 41. Read. Then Judah appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress mm -hmm. until he cleansed the sanctuary. Because Antiochia had defiled it. Go ahead. So he chose priests of blameless conversation, mm -hmm. such as a pleasure in the law. You see that part right there? He says he chose priests of blameless conversation, such as a pleasure in the law. So the men that he surrounded himself with was those that had pleasure in the law. So if you don't have pleasure in the law, keep it moving. You understand? If you don't have pleasure in what is written in this book, keep it moving. Why? Because this is not, like, this, this is not the place for you. You understand? Watch this. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 24. Because in the book of Luke, the same thing was happening back then, is happening today. Luke chapter 24 and verse 31. Watch this. You know what? Start at verse, start at verse 28. You're going to start at verse 28. Luke 24, 28. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 28. Come on. And they drew nigh unto the village. That's right. Whither they went. Right. Eight. And he made as though he would have gone further. Meaning what? He made it as though he was passing, he was not stopping with them. Come on, this is after his resurrection. Read. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. Mm -hmm. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. Right. And he went in to tarry with them. So now they, they, they said, listen, they constrained him. They said, no, 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 stay with us. You understand? Abide with us. For it was, it was toward the evening. It's late. The day is far spent. And he what? He stayed with them. Go ahead. Verse 30. And it came to pass. As he sat, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread. And placed it and break and gave it to them. You see that thing? This is Christ now. He says, when he said at meat with them, he says he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. This bread right here, watch this, you know. This thing was gonna tell you what the bread is. It's twofold, but I'm gonna explain it in on this level. Read verse 31. And their eyes were open. And they are what? Eyes were open, and their eyes were opened. Go ahead, their spiritual eyes were open, read, and they knew him, mm -hmm. and he vanished out of their sight. So Christ was just he just he just beat me up, he was just teleporting all over the place. Okay, come on, verse 32. Watch this. And they said one to another, mm -hmm. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked? With us, by the way, come on, and while he opened us the scriptures, you see that thing. This is the mindset of our forefathers. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, read that part again. Verse 32. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 32. Read, and they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us, by the way? Come on, and while he opened to us the scriptures, you see how our forefathers was. Our forefathers, they were always in the script. Their conversation was about the scriptures because they found joy in the scriptures. You see that thing right there? That's what brought joy to their spirit. They, they were not talking about soccer. To hell with that. They didn't care about pirates or chase. Who's, who's, who's winning this? They didn't give a damn about that thing. Why? Because they, they delighted in what? In the acts of their forefathers. 
Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These are forefathers that we must keep pride in. These are men of renown. You understand? Leaders of the people by their counsel. These men, they were wise men and they walked the earth. And today they are back with day. You understand? Watch this. Go back to where was that? First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 41. First Maccabees chapter 4, verse 31. The point with this is that when you when you see the, the mindset of our forefathers, when they walked with Christ after he was resurrected, it says, Did not our heart bang within us when he walked with us by the way, when he opened unto us the scriptures? You understand? Because they delighted in them. They loved when he was breaking down the scriptures, giving them the sense. So Judah Maccabee, he was surrounded by people like that, that delight, that had pleasure in God's laws. First Maccabee 4, verse 42 again. First book of Maccabee chapter 4, verse 42. So he chose priests of blameless conversation, mm -hmm. such as had pleasure in the law. You see that thing? Such as had pleasure in the law. Give me Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18, real quick. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18. Such as had pleasure in the law. Their delight was found in God's commandments. You understand? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Read. And the man that getteth understanding. You see where your joy is coming from? You see where your happiness comes from? He says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And the man that getteth understanding. How do you, how you find wisdom? Watch this. What is wisdom first and foremost? Give me that in Sirach, chapter 19, verse 19. You know what? Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. We'll read this one. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 5. Let's start there. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. I have taught you what? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. So now you see what Moses is saying is that I have taught you statutes and judgment. The statutes, these are the bylaws. The judgment is the punishment for breaking these laws. He says, I've taught you statutes and judgment, even as the Lord my God commanded me. Because Moses was commanded to teach us the commandments, the laws, and the judgment for breaking these laws. Go ahead. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom. For Come this on. is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. You see that part right shall hear all these statutes. It says, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. So, what is our wisdom? Our wisdom is what? The statutes, the laws, the judgments, and the commandments. That's our wisdom. You understand? He says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Go back to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 now. Again. Proverbs 3, verse 13. Come on. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Mm -hmm. And the man that getteth understanding. And the man that getteth understanding. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Watch this. Give me that in Sarag 127, verse 26. Sarag 126. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 26. It says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Now we understand what the wisdom is that when you find it, you're going to be happy. It's going to bring joy and pleasure to your life. The Rock Ecclesiastes 1, verse 26. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 26. Read. If thou desire with keep the commandments, mm -hmm. and the Lord shall give her unto thee. You see that thing? You see how you find wisdom? You keep the commandments. If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. The only way you're going to receive the wisdom of the Most High, you must keep his commandments. You must keep the law. Okay? Go back to Proverbs now. 3 verse 18, once again. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. So you see where your joy, your joy is found? in the laws of the Most High. 
and the man that getteth understanding. Because once you receive understanding of this Bible, you are going to be happy. You're going to find joy. You understand? Watch this. Um, give me the book of Sirach 21, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 11. He says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You see that thing? And the perfection. Hold on. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You keep God's commandments, you will receive understanding. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. You understand? You keep God's commandments, you will receive understanding. So that's what's gonna be, that's what brought joy to our forefathers in the in the days of old. That's what's supposed to bring joy to us today because we are walking after their footsteps. You understand? Now go back to first Maccabees. First Maccabees chapter two, verse sixty-seven. First Maccabees chapter two, verse sixty-seven. Take also unto you all those that observe the law. And avenge ye the wrong of your people. You see that thing? So when you observe the law, that's the only time when you're going to be in the right mindset to avenge the wrong of your people. Because right now, this is a spiritual war. So the only way to fight this war is by the spirit. You must keep the commandment and go and teach your people God's laws and open their eyes. You understand? You can only be fit to go to war out there on the street corners if you want to get yourself right, to get your mind right, so you can what? You can see clearly out of this Bible. Come on. Verse 58. Recompense fully the heathen mm -hmm. and take heed to the commandments of the law. You see what he's saying? It says recompense. Pay back fully the heathen. The heathen is our enemy. Those that put us in slavery, those that colonize us, those that oppress us and still oppressing us under apartheid and so forth, those are the heathen. And take heed to the commandments of the law. Go ahead. So he blessed him and was gathered to his heart. Meaning Marathias died. Come on. And he died in the 140 and 6th year. And his sons buried him in the sepulchres of his fathers at Modim. And all Israel made great lamentation for him. So now Marathias died. But before he died, what did he do? He commanded the, his sons what they need to do after his God. Meaning what? Don't drop the ball. That's what he's telling them. Don't drop the ball on this one. Stay in the spirit and stay focused. Watch this. Go back to First Maccabees now. Now, when he's gonna read down, Judas is gonna be he's gonna be what? He's, he's gonna be bringing hell upon the Greeks and all that. And then he dies. He died also in battle. And then others also, his, his, his brothers also. So the ones that was left were Simon and Jonathan. So we're going to deal with our forefather, Simon, because it is the day of Simon. Okay, he's gone already, but we must go over it. Okay, uh, First Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 1. First Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 1. Come on. Now, when Simon heard that Tryphon had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and destroy it. So Tryphon, Tryphon is what? Tryphon was a Greek general. Give me that in First Maccabees 11, verse 39. First Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 39. First Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 39. Read. Moreover, there was, a, there was one Tryphon that had been of Alexander's part of all, who, seeing that all the hosts murmured against Demetrius, went to Simalcu, and Arabian, the Arabian, the Arabian, the Simalcu, the Arabian, that brought up Antiochus, the young son of Alexander. So this Alexander is not talking about Alexander, the so-called Greek. He's not talking about because Alexander didn't have children. He was sleeping with men. He was nasty as hell. Because moreover, there was one trifle that had been of Alexander's part of four, who was seeing that all the host murmured against Demetrius. Demetrius was another king of the Greeks. You understand? But he had made league with our forefather Jonathan. All right? Um, 
So, but Typhon wanted to kill young Antiochus so that he can he can take his throne. This Antiochus is the great 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 grandson of Antiochus that we read about in First Maccabees, the first chapter. Okay, go back to First Maccabees chapter thirteen, verse one. You read the whole history on your own. First Maccabees thirteen, verse one again. First Maccabees chapter thirteen, verse one. Now, when Simon heard that Trifon had gathered together a great host to invade the land of Judea and destroy it. So Trifon wanted to destroy the land of Judea. You understand Jerusalem? Come on. And saw that the people was in great trembling and fear. He went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together. You see that thing? So our forefather Simon, because remember now, Judah Maccabee, you understand? Um, the rest of the brethren, they are all dead. So now the people are in great fear. It says when the people saw, was it, it says when, and saw that the people was in great trembling and fear, he went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together. You understand? Why? Because now the people, is the, 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 his brothers are, are gone. Now it's just him. Jonathan, we're not counting him, but we're going to read about him as we read down the chapter. Come on. And gave them exhortation, say, Ye yourselves know what great things I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the laws and the sanctuary. The battles also and troubles which we have seen. So now he's telling the people, he said, listen, you've seen what I and my brethren and my father's house have done for the laws of the Most High and to defend the people. We fought for the people. That's what he's telling them. Because of what? Marathias. Marathias was a good father. You understand? He taught his son. He taught his son about war, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and about family. He taught them about family. Yes, they were men of war, but they were also family men. Go ahead. By reason whereof all my brethren are slain for Israel's sake, mm -hmm. and I am left alone. He says, "And I am left alone." So that part right there when he says, I am left alone, that's why in verse 2, jump back up to verse 2, that's why the people was afraid. Okay, read verse 2 again. Verse Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 2. And saw that the people was in great trembling and fear and went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together. He gathered the people together because he saw they were in fear because the people saw he's the only one that's left. So now they're wondering, wait a minute, Judas is gone, you understand? Um, all the rest of the brethren, they are gone. So now what are we going to do? You understand? Watch this. Read on, verse 5. Verse 5. Now therefore, be it far from me, that I should spare my own life in, my, in any time of trouble, for I am no better than my brethren. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm not going to spare my life. You understand? You, all, you know we fought the battle because it doesn't mean Simon wasn't fighting the battle. He was fighting the battle. The problem is now he's left by himself. You understand? And the people are fearful. So now he went to Jerusalem to, to comfort them, to encourage them. You understand? He says, listen, now therefore be far from me that I should spare my own life in my time of trouble for I'm no better than my brethren. He says, I'm going to fight. The Lord is with me. I'm going to be with you. Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation. You see what he's and saying? Saint. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation. They're telling them without a doubt the mission is a goal. This is going to get done. Go ahead. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation mm -hmm. and the saints and our wives and our children. For all the heathen are gathered to destroy, to destroy us of every malice. You see that thing? It says all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of very malice. Because the heathen, who are the heathen at this point? The Greek, the white men. It says they were gathered together of very many. They had ill intent. They had evil intention to destroy us. So now the people was worried. So, so Simon is, is encouraging them. He says, the Lord is with us. We're going to fight. You understand? And we shall win because the Lord is with us. So it is today. Go ahead. Now, as soon as the people heard these words, their spirit revived. Their spirit did what? 
the spirit revived. Because why? The people were fearful. The people were scared. That's why the, the spirit revived. You understand? Jump back up to verse 2 again. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 2. And gave them exhortation. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 2. And so that the people was in great trembling and fear. He went up to Jerusalem and gathered the people together. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? Because the people were fearful. So in verse um, in verse 7, he's what? He's encouraging them. He's exhorting them. That's why it says, after he spoke the words that he spoke, he says, their spirit revived. Read on. Verse 8. First book of Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 8. And they answered with a loud voice, saying, Thou shalt be our leader instead of Judas and Jonathan thy brother. So now you see, now Jonathan is coming into the picture. He says, You're going to be our leader instead of Judas because Judas is gone. He says, And Jonathan thy brother. Because where's Jonathan? We're going to, we're going to go into our forefather, Jonathan. You understand? Because Jonathan, don't get it. Jonathan was a mighty man. Watch this. Give me 1 Maccabees chapter 12. 1 Maccabees 12, verse 1. First Maccabees. We're gonna to touch on our forefather Jonathan just for a second. Okay, first Maccabees 12, verse 1. First book of Maccabees of the 12, verse 1. Now, when Jonathan saw that the time served him, he chose certain men and sent them to Rome for to confirm and renew the friendship that they had with him. Read. He sent letters also to the Lacedaemonians. To the Lacedaemonians. Lacedaemonians. Lacedaemonians is the Spartans. Spartans, those were black people. Don't, 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 don't be surprised when the white man is painting, is painting our their images white and all that. No, no. The Spartans in that movie 300, that was us. You understand? That was our people right there. The Lacedaemonians. Read that part again, verse 2. First book of Maccabees of 12 verse 2. Really? He sends letters also to the Lacedaemonians and to other places for the same purpose. So now what Jonathan was doing, Jonathan was renewing the friendship of our with our forefathers, the Lacedaemonians. You understand? Because the Lacedaemonians were a military need in, 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 the, in, in, in Greece. Those of our forefathers, they were the elite military group. You understand? The Lacedaemonians. So Jonathan was writing to them to renew the friendship which they had. You understand? Read on. Verse 3. And they went unto Rome and entered into the Senate and said, Jonathan, the high priest, and the people of the Jews sent us unto you to the end ye should renew the friendship which ye had with them and league. As in former time, you see that thing. He says we must renew the friendship which we had at all time because we got disconnected. Jump down to verse five. And this is the copy of the letters which Jonathan wrote to the Lacedaemonians. You see that thing. So Jonathan wrote a letter to the Lacedaemonians. Remember, when the Greeks was in power, Rome Rome wasn't in power, but Rome was a what? It was just a a, a, a combination of city states. You understand from 509 BC. Remember, the Greeks came into power when 333 BC. Okay, 333 BC. But Rome was, was still around. Rome was around, but it was not a powerhouse at that time. So, but Rome was also starting to come up. You understand? And at, at around 509 BC, it was called the Roman Republic. You understand? It was called the Roman Republic. 509 BC. But when you do the, the, the research, it will be saying 27 BC. 27 BC, that's when it was called the Roman Empire under what? Under Julius. You understand? But the Roman, the Roman Republic, that was around 509 BC. That is during the time of the Maccabees. Rome wasn't a power, but it was called the Roman Republic. Okay, read that again. Verse 5. Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 12, verse 5. Wait. Really? And this is the copy of the letters which Jonathan wrote. Really? Which Jonathan wrote to the Lacedaemonians. Come on. 
Jonathan, the high priest, and the elders of the nation, and the priests, and the other people of the Jews, unto the Lacedaemonians, their brethren, send the greeting. You see that thing? The, it says, unto the Lacedaemonians, their brethren, send greeting. So the Lacedaemonians, we are, we, they are brethren to us. You understand? Jump down to verse 19 now. And this is the copy of the letters which Onirus sent. Read. Eris. Arius. King. Arius, king of the Lacedaemonians. Read. Arius, king of the Lacedaemonians, to Onias, the high priest, greeting. Mm -hmm. It is found in writing that the Lacedaemonians and Jews are brethren. You see that thing? It is found in writing that the, the Lacedaemonians and Jews are brethren. So those men that you see in that movie, 300, the Spartans, that's our people right there. You understand? Don't worry about their color of their skin. That's just whitewashing gold. Go ahead. And that they are of the stock of Abraham. You see that thing? And that they are of the stock of Abraham. Now jump down to verse 39 now. Okay, jump down to verse 39. So what's going on here is that um, Demetrius, uh, our forefather Jonathan, he made league with Demetrius and all that. And Demetrius was what? Demetrius was was uh, he he was he was he was friends with us. You understand? He was the king. But there were others in the Greek kingdom. You understand that did not want to do anything with us. One of those people was Tryphon. You understand? Tryphon despised us. You understand? So read verse 39. First uh, Maccabees 12 verse 39. Read that. First book of Maccabees 12 verse 39. Mm -hmm. Now Typhon went about to get the kingdom of Asia and to kill Antiochus the king. Really? He might set the crown upon his own head. So now Typhon, he was a Greek general, you understand? He wanted to kill Antiochus to take his crown. So that he can sit in his bed. You understand? Come on. Howbeit, he was afraid that Jonathan would not suffer him. He was afraid. You see that Tryphon was afraid of our forefather Jonathan. Jonathan didn't play games. Okay, read on. And that he would fight against him. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he sought a way how to take Jonathan that he might kill him. Read. So he removed and came to Bethsan. Bethsan. So what Tryphon wanted to do, he realized that he can kill Antiochus so he can sit on his throne because he knew that Jonathan wasn't going to agree to that mess, to, to that thing. You understand? Because there was a leak of amity among us and the Greeks. This is during under the Roman Republic. The Roman Republic, you understand? And the Greeks was in power. We, had a, we, had, we made a leak with... Um, with, 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 with the Edomites at that point, Demetrius was one of them. You understand? Jonathan had made a league with Demetrius. Okay, come on. Then Jonathan went out to meet him with 40,000 men chosen from for the battle and came to Bethsan. You see that thing? So Jonathan, our forefather, he came with 40,000 chosen men, men of war. So he was what? He was 40,000 deep when he went to meet Tripod. You see that thing? Our forefathers didn't play games. So all these Christian church boys and all of that, be wearing tight pants and, um, and pink socks and white shoes and all of that with their hair blonde. Listen, the most I don't deal with like that. So our, our brothers, they must leave the Christian church and come and read this Bible and see really how the, the spirit our forefathers moved in. You understand? Read that again, verse 41. First book of Maccabees of the 12 verse 41. Really? Then Jonathan went out to meet him with 40,000 men chosen for battle and came to Bethsan. Really? Now when Typhon saw that Jonathan came with so great a force, he does not stretch his hand against him. You see that thing? He realized, listen, this brother right here, he, this man right here, Listen, whatever I plan to do, I'm not going to be able to do it. I cannot go to war with him. You understand? This white man understood that. Read. 
but received him honorably. Uh -huh. Commended him unto all his friends Ray. and gave and commanded his men of war to be as obedient unto him as to himself. You see what he's saying right there? So what 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 Typhon did instead of going to war with Jonathan, you see what he says is but received him honorably. He said he played, he said, you know what? I have to come up with another strategy on how to approach him. I need to deal with him in a friendly way. You see that part right there? And commended him unto all his friends. Now he's battering our forefather and gave him gifts. You see that thing? Because he wanted to do what? Give me that in Exodus. Okay. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 8. Exodus 23 verse 8. This is the law regarding ethics. Okay. Watch this. Exodus 23 verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 8. And thou shalt take no gift. Thou shalt take no what? Gift. Thou shalt take no gift, meaning bribe. Because that's what Tryphon was doing for our forefather Jonathan. He was trying to bribe him. He was buttering him. You understand? Come on. For the gift blinded the wise. You see that thing right there? For the gift blinded the wise. The gift blind the wise. Read. Really? And perverted the words of the righteous. And perverted the words of the righteous. That's what Tryphon was intending to do. Go back to where he was at now. First Maccabee, chapter 12, verse 43. First book of Maccabees of 12, verse 43. But received him honorably and commended him unto all his friends and gave him gifts and commanded his men of war to be as obedient unto him as to himself. You see that thing? So he's telling his men as well he said, to be obedient to Jonathan as he was obedient to Jonathan. But this whole thing was just the what he was a front. He was pretending. Go ahead, come on. And to Jonathan, and to Jonathan also he said, Why hast thou put all ye all these people to so great trouble, seeing that there is no hope betwixt us? You see what he's saying? He says, Why did you bring so many men? Why did you bring 40,000 men of war? You understand? Because seeing there's no war between us. So now he's making it seem like Jonathan is crazy. You understand? That's why he's making it seem like he said, you didn't have to go through so much trouble to bring all these men here because there's no war between us. You understand? Come on. Therefore, send them now home again and choose a few men to wait on thee and come thou with me to Ptolemy. 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 Come on. And come and come thou with me to Ptolemy. For I will give it thee and the rest of the strongholds and forces. And all that have any charge, as for me, I will return and depart. For this is the cause of my coming. So now he's lying. He says, the reason why I came was to give you Ptolemy. Ptolemy was a land so that it can, it can be conquered. So he's telling Jonathan, he said, the reason why I actually came was so that I can give Ptolemy into your hands. You understand? He says, for this, is the, for, this cause, for this is the cause of my coming. He's lying. He's not telling the truth. All this, give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Okay, Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12 and verse 10. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes of 12 verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. For like his iron rusted, so is his wickedness. You see what the Bible is saying? It says never, never, never trust thine enemy. Because Typhon was, an, he was our enemy. You understand? They still are this day. So it says, never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Meaning what? You, you, you ever seen a, a steel pipe, like a steel material? At the beginning, it's, it's looking good. There's no rust on it. But it says, eventually, it's going to rust. So that's what he's saying. He says, so is the wickedness will come out eventually in due time. That's what he's saying. So right now, what Typhoon is showing, our forefather Jonathan is, 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 is acting like a friend to him. Okay, but he had ill intentions. 
Go back to First Maccabees 12. First Maccabees 12, verse 46. Watch this. First book of Maccabees 12, verse 46. So Jonathan, believing him, did as he bade him and sent away to his hosts who went into the land of Judea. You see what Jonathan did? Our forefather Jonathan, he believed what this what this uh, what this demon said unto him. He says, so Jonathan, believing him, did as he bade him and sent away his host who went into the land of Judea. So they went back. You understand? Read. And he and with himself, he retained but three thousand men, of whom he sent two thousand into Galilee, and one thousand went with him. So now Jonathan now he's got one thousand men with him. You understand? 1,000 men. He sent the others as well because he had 40,000. You understand? He sent them away. He had 3,000 left. 2,000, he sent them to Galilee and 1,000 remained with him. So now Jonathan has got 1,000 men now with him. Go ahead. Now, as soon as Jonathan entered into Ptolemais, they of Ptolemais shut the gates and took him and all them that came with him and they slew him with the sword. You see what they did? So what this was an ambush. This was an ambush. So Typhon got our forefather Jonathan to send his to send the, 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 the men of war away. Say, listen, there's no war between us. You understand? So what is happening here is that as soon as he was left without 1,000 men, that's when when he entered into Ptolemais, they shut the gates, and guess what happened? They slew those 1,000 men that was with Jonathan. You understand? Come on. Verse 49. They sent Typhron and host of footmen and horsemen into Galilee. Then sent Typhron and host of footmen and horsemen into Galilee and into the great plain to destroy all Jonathan's company. Meaning Jonathan's men, the soldiers. So what Typhron did was he was remember. The 2,000 men of Jonathan that were sent to Galilee to what? To protect the city. You understand? So now, now what's going on here is that now Typhon knows how many men are in Galilee. You understand? The garrison. He, know, he knows how many men. Because the worst thing you can do is to give the number of how many men is in your army. So what is going on here is that then sent Typhon and host of footmen and horsemen into Galilee, into the great plain, to destroy all Jonathan's company. How many was they? 2,000 men. Remember, the rest is went back to Judea. They are in the south now. Okay? Jump down to verse 53. Then all the heathen that were round about them sought to destroy them. For said they, they have no captain, nor any to help them. Now, therefore, let us make war upon them and take away their memorial from among men. You see that thing? So now Typhon now is, is sending, because remember, Jonathan is not dead. Jonathan is not dead at this point. Jonathan is taken hostage. They, they killed his men, but he was kept alive. You understand? Now, he's sending a message out to say, listen, they have no captain, you understand, nor any to help them. Now, therefore, let us make war upon them and take away their memorial from among men. That's what the nations have been doing to us. You understand? They are still doing, us, doing, doing the same thing to us today. But today is a new day because the Lord is raising new leaders now. A new breed of leaders is raising up. You understand? And our weapon of war is this Bible. Understand that this is our war. This is our, the weapon of our warfare right here to see through what the heathens are planning to do to us and what they are doing to our people this day so our people can know this book and come out of the Christian church, politics, democracy, Islam, so-called economics and all of that because that's not going to deliver our people out of captivity and slavery. That's not going to do it. The laws of God will. We keep God's commandments. When the Lord returns, we will be delivered if we endure until the end. So now when you notice here, they have no captain and all of that, that's why now Simon is raising up. Because Simon was fighting with Jude, with, with fighting with Judas in battle and all of that, but now he's the only one left. 
That's why first market is chapter 13. Now we go through the day of Simon. Because now Simon is like, I'm the one, only one left. Okay, the mission is a go. We're going to what? We're going to fight with our enemies and we shall win. Because the Lord is with us. Okay? Uh, first Maccabees now, chapter 13. First Maccabees chapter 13 and verse 8. First book of Maccabees, 13 verse 8. And they answered with a loud voice saying, Thou shalt be our leader instead of Judas and Jonathan thy brother. Because Jonathan is gone now. He's not dead, but they took him. Read. Fight thou our battles. And whatsoever thou commandest us, that we will do. You see that thing? And whatsoever thou commandest us, that we will do. You see, a lot of the times, man, we, because there's no actual physical war that's going on, that's why brothers, when you give them command, you say, listen, bro, you need to do X, Y, and Z. You see cancer, you don't apply the cancer. Because you don't have, there's no, there's no, you don't see people dropping dead around you. You see, our forefathers, during the time of that physical warfare that was going on, they understood, listen, whatsoever thou commandest us, that we will do. They, will, they understood what? If we don't follow counsel, guess what's going to happen? When we go to war, definitely I'm going to be a casualty of war. That's the, that was the thought process. So in order to avoid that, that I do not become a casualty of war, I'm going to follow command. I'm going to follow counsel. I'm going to follow the right steps for the counsel. You see that thing? That was the mindset of our forefathers. Today is a spiritual war. The mind of the people is what is imprisoned. You understand? So when you look at the condition of your people, listen, that's the congregation of the day. Our people don't know who they are. They lost their culture, identity. Our people have an identity crisis. That's where you see your Kalimba wounds. They are what? They bleach their skin now. She looks like a white woman. Now she's even a, she put a blonde wig on her head. What is that called? Self-hatred. Because she don't know that she's Israel. That's the point. So these are the dead bodies that you see. Spiritually dead. The walking dead. That's our people. Our job is to get them out of that mental imprisonment before the Lord returns. Go ahead. Let's turn. Come on. So then he gathered together all the men of war and made haste to finish the walls of Jerusalem and he fortified it round about. So Simon fortified the city because he knew now is war time. So war was on Simon's mind. You understand? He fortified the city round about and he set the men up. Okay, come on. Also he sent Jonathan, the son of Absalom, with him a great power to chop it who casting out them that were therein, remained there in it. Wait. So Typhron removed from Ptolemyus with the great power to invade the land of Judea, mm -hmm. and Jonathan was with him in war. You see where Jonathan was? Jonathan was a hostage. So now Jonathan is a hostage, and Typhron now, he's living to, he left Ptolemyus, where did he go? He went into the land of Judea. You understand? He went into the land of Judea with a what? With a great arm to invade it. Go ahead. But Simon pitched his tent at Adida over against the plain. Meaning what? Simon, he got, he got wind that uh, Typhon is planning to do what? To bring war in Judea. Read. Now, when Typhron knew that Simon was risen up instead of his brother Jonathan and meant to join battle with him, he sent messengers unto him, saying, Ray, whereas we have Jonathan thy brother in hold, it is for money that he is owing us unto the king's treasure concerning the business that was committed unto him. So now Typhon is lying to, to Simon. He says, Well, oh, the reason why we have your brother Simon. As a hostage, it is because of what? Money that is owing unto the king's treasure. You understand? So we have him in hostage because he what? He's indebted to us. So he needs to pay the debt, then we'll release him. That's the thought here. Obviously, he's lying. Go ahead. Wherefore, now send an hundred talents of silver and two of his sons for hostages. You see what he's saying? That we... 
He's saying, listen, in order for us to release, do you understand? He says, what? Send a hundred talents of silver, meaning money, and two of his sons for hostages. So he says, a hundred talents of silver and his two sons, meaning Jonathan's two sons. Ready? That when he is at liberty, he may not revolt from us and we will let him go. You see what they're saying? It says, when he's free, he's not going to revolt. So what we want is a down payment. We want to give us a hundred talents of silver and his two sons. You understand? Come on. Hereupon, Simon, albeit he perceived that they spake deceitfully unto him, right? yet sent he the money and the children, lest peradventure he should lest peradventure he should procure to himself greater great hatred of the people. So now, what Simon now so far is like, you know what? Um, because he he picked up that obviously this is a lie. There's no such thing going on. They have him, but the reason why they have him is they want to use him as bait so that they can come and invade. So that's why he fortified the city, you understand, in the tent. But what Simon did, he said, you know what? I'm going to send the money and the children because Simon understood that Trifon is not going to let Jonathan go. He understood that. Because remember what was Trifon's motive behind doing this? He wanted to kill Antiochia so he can sit on his throne. That is the reason why he's doing this. So, and he understood that Jonathan was not going to agree to this thing. So, I need to kill Jonathan so I can have free access to this guy. You understand? So, but he sent the money anyway. He sent the money and he two sons. Uh, it says, let the adventure he should procure to himself great hatred of the people. Because guess what's gonna, what was going to happen? If he had, had he not sent the money and the sons, the people, because he knew that they were going to kill Jonathan anyway. But he sent the money and the two sons so that when they kill Jonathan, you understand, and his son, the people are not going to blame him. But had he not sent it, guess what's going to happen? Had they killed him, if because they were going to kill him anyway, they were, guess who they were going to blame? They were going to blame Simon. He says, is his fault? Jonathan and his sons are dead. You see that thing? That's why Simon was a man of counsel. He was a man of wisdom. You understand? Read. Who might have said, because I sent him not the money and the children, therefore is Jonathan dead. Read. So he sent them the children and the hundred talents. Howbeit, Trifon dissembled, neither would he let Jonathan, Jonathan go. So he didn't let Jonathan go, come on. And after this came Trifon to invade the land and destroy it, going round about by the way that leadeth unto Adora. Right. But Simon and his host marched against him in every place where, wheresoever he went. So wherever Trifon went, he found a garrison. He found the city fortified because Simon did that thing. So that's why it says, wheresoever he went, where it says Simon and his host marched against him in every place wheresoever he went. So wherever Typhon went, he found the city fortified with the men of war. You understand? Come on. Now they that were in the tower sent messengers unto Typhon to the end that he should hasten, to the end that he should hasten his coming unto them by the wilderness and send them videos. You see that thing? Because guess what? Remember when Simon, because Simon was making war, he was causing havoc and conquering lands and taking the people hostage and all that. Because the lands that he was conquering is the lands that they took from us. So now he's regaining certain lands back and what? And giving us certain freedom. You understand? So the people that was in the, upon our land, those were the heathen, the Greeks. So now, you see what he's saying? So the people that are now in the tower were... Um, they, where, where, where our forefathers were the soldiers that Simon had set up, there were, there were Greeks, Edomites, that was there. So now they want Typhon to come and rescue them because they wanted food. So what was going on? That we were starving them. You understand? Ray? Wherefore, 
Typhron made ready all his horsemen to come that night. But there fell a very great snow by reason whereof he came not. So he departed and came into the country of Galad. So now what is happening is that Typhon had planned to go and get those people out, but he couldn't because there was a great snow. The Lord is the one that did that. You understand? The most that God is the one that did that thing. Watch this. Give me the history of Susanna. Okay? Give me the history of Susanna. No, the three holy children. The three holy children, chapter 1. The three holy children, chapter 1, verse 35. Watch this. Come on. The three holy children, chapter 1, verses 35. Oh, all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Really? Oh, ye heavens, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. So now it says, all, it says, all, all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. So the works of the Lord, watch this. Jump down to the, jump down to verse 45, read verse 45. The three holy children, chapter 1, verse 45. O ye winter and summer, bless ye the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. So how does winter bless the Lord? Because the season, when the season enters, when winter enters, when the winter season comes through, which is where we are at now, winter is blessing the Lord. Is a season that blesses the most high. You understand? It says, all ye winter and summer. Summer is a season. When summer comes, it bless is what is exalting and praising the Lord. Bless ye the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Read on. Oh ye dews and storms of snow. And what? Bless ye the Lord and storms of snow. It says, all ye dews and storms of snow. Read. Bless you the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise with him above all forever. You see that thing right there? So when there was a snow, when Typhon was supposed to go over to get the people out from the tower, the most that God, the snow came down. That was the Lord. That was the snow blessing the Lord. Preventing Typhon from doing what he wanted to do. It was of the Lord. You understand? Go back to First Maccabees chapter 13. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 22. Again. First book of Maccabees chapter 13, verse 22. Ready? Wherefore, wherefore, Typhon made ready all his horsemen to come that night, but they fell a very great snow. So by reason whereof he came not. So he departed and came into the country of Galad. Galad, that's Greece, that's Galatia. Go ahead. Now, when he came near to Bak Baskama, Baskama, come on. Now, when he came, now when he came near to Baskama, he slew Jonathan, who was buried there. You see that thing? So Typhon, when he realized that he couldn't go, you understand? Uh, he couldn't go to Adora. He realized, you know what? Let me. I'm gonna kill Jonathan now. So he killed Jonathan and buried him there, near to Baskama. These are the these are the cities in Greece. Okay, um, he says, and when he came to Baskama, he slew Jonathan, who was buried there. So he buried him there, and they kept it moving. Watch this, come on. Afterward, Typhon returned and went into his own land. Come on. Then Simon and took, then Saint Simon and took the bones of Jonathan, his brother, and buried them in Modin. The city of his fathers. But that's where our forefather Marathias died at. You understand? The city of Modi. Read verse 26. And all Israel made great lamentation for him mm -hmm. and bewailed him many days. So now they were mourning for Jonathan's death because Jonathan is dead now. Typhon has killed him. Okay, come on. Simon also built a monument upon the sepulcher of his father and his brethren. And raised it aloft to the site with hew stone behind and before. So what is what is going into here is a what is a is a 
is a is a tool. Okay, so what is going on is if you, you see it says uh, it was it was they, they built hewn stone. Okay, it says with hewn stone behind and before. Come on, watch this verse twenty eight. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids. He did what? One again. Set up seven pyramids. He set up seven pyramids because the pyramids, we use the pyramids for what? To bury our people. So when, they, when the, the Egyptians, what they did was they used our skills of building pyramids because the Egyptians didn't know how to build pyramids until we came into Egypt. We was, we, when we arrived, we built pyramids to, to, uh, to bury our dead. So the Egyptians, they took that to bury their king, the pharaohs. You understand? And when we died, the Egyptians, they took the, our forefathers and foremothers, they buried them alive with them, saying, now you're gonna, you must serve them. You're going to serve the Pharaoh after death, but they must bury you alive. That's some evil stuff. When you read the history of the Zulus, it's the same. They was doing that also. When a Zulu king died, that's what they did. You understand? Because that's Canaan. The majority of them, that's Canaan right there. Okay? Read on. Moreover, he set up seven pyramids, one against another, for his father and his mother and his four brethren. You see that thing? So he set up seven pyramids, one against another, for his father and his mother and his four brethren. Because now the brothers are gone, now it's him that is left. Read on. And in these he made cunning devices, about the which he set great pillars, and upon the pillars, he made all their armor for a perpetual memory. And by the armor, and by the armor should carved that they might be seen of all that, of all that sail on the sea. So now he made a memorial of his father, his mother, and his four brethren, so that when those that are passing by by the sea, you understand, they'll be able to see that memorial. Okay, come on. This is the sepulchre which he made at Motin, and it standeth yet unto this day. Meaning what that sepulchre is still standing unto this day in Modin. Go ahead. Now Typhon dealt deceitfully with the young king Antiochus and slew him. You see what Typhon, because this was Typhon's objective from the get, from the get go. Typhon wanted to kill young Antiochus. This Antiochus here is not the Antiochus of 1 Maccabees 1 verse 11. Is not that Antiochus. This is the great, 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 great son of Antiochus the fourth. This is the great, great kid now, the grandchild. So he killed him and he what? He sat in his throne now. Because Jonathan was not going to allow him to. So Jonathan was a threat. He was an obstacle. So he wanted to get rid of the obstacle so that he can sit on the throne. Go ahead. And he reigned in his state and crowned himself king of Asia and brought a great calamity upon the land. Because the problem with Typhon was that he just wanted to spoil everything. That was the spirit of Typhon. He wanted to spoil everything, all the land, the people, to rob them, to take their resources. That's the same thing the white man is doing today because he, those are his forefathers. So he's moving in the same spirit he was back then that his forefathers was moving in. He's moving with the same spirit today. They still land. They steal people and countries and continents. They steal their resources upon the land. You understand? And by the time they leave, the people are left impoverished. Countries are destroyed. There's no resources. Read on. Then Simon built up the strongholds in Judea and fenced them and fenced them about with high towers and great walls and gates and bars and laid up videos therein. So he was, he put food in. That's why I told you, brothers and sisters, you must stock up. You understand? Stock up because there is a famine that's coming. All right? There's a famine that's coming. So make sure that you buy the, the non-perishables and store them. Don't use them. Okay? Come on. Moreover, Simon chose men and sent to King Demetrius. To the end, he should give the land an immunity because all that Typhon did was to spoil. 
you see that thing so now simon is 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 sending is sending men to teaching demetrius to what to what to have an immunity upon the land because siphon was causing havoc demetrius is a greek you understand but guess what he made a league he made league with jonathan by the way demetrius was 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 he, he made a league of amity with jonathan because he realized that jonathan was a mighty man of war and he realized that i cannot defeat this man so he rather i make league with him so simon is doing the same thing with demetrius who made league with who with jonathan go ahead And to whom King Demetrius answered and wrote after this manner. Great. King Demetrius unto Simon, the high priest, and friend of kings, as also unto the elders and nation of Jews, standeth greeting. He says, and he says, what King Demetrius unto Simon, the high priest, and friend of kings, as also unto the elders and nation of the Jews, standeth greeting. Read on, verse 37. The golden crown and the scarlet robe, which is sent unto us, we have received, and we are ready to make a steadfast peace with you. Yea, and to write unto our officers to confirm the immunities which we have granted. You see what he's saying? So now they are making they are exchanging gifts as a sign of what? This is a they are having a peace treaty so that they can gain immunity. So what Simon is doing, he is now regaining the land back that was taken by Tripod. Okay, come on. And whatsoever covenant we have made with you shall stand. And the strongholds which you have built it shall be your, be your own. You see that thing? So he's saying the strong, the strong land that you, meaning what? The land that you conquered, the territories that you own will remain your own. Right? As for any oversight or fault committed unto this day, we forgive it. And the crown tax also, which you owe us. And if there were any other tribute paid in Jerusalem, it shall no more be paid. You see that thing, it says you're not paying tribute anymore. You're not going to pay tax anymore and so forth. You understand? Because we were paying colonial tax. Because who was ruling? The Greeks. But our forefathers, we fought to protect the temple, the nation, the women, the sons and daughters. And to protect our sanctuary. You understand? That's why, because remember, these Greek kings, they know our reputation. They know our reputation from the time of Judas Maccabee and his brethren, Jonathan, and even unto Simon. They knew we were causing havoc. You understand? We were destroying the heathens and killing them. And those of our people that were, were, that were the coons of our people, you understand? Those who were bootlegs and all that, we put them to death as well. Because why? They were the enemies of what? Of the gospel. So there was enemies, we put them to death. Okay, come on. And look, who are meet among you to be in our court. Let them be enrolled. And let there be peace between us. Between us. Come on. Thus the yoke of the heathen was taken away from Israel in the 170th year. You see that thing is that the yoke of the heathen was taken away from Israel in the 170th year. So guess what? The yoke of bondage, of oppression, of tax, you understand, of tribute and customs that he paid unto them, it was no more. Because of the acts our forefathers did to bring us the freedom that we, we had back then. You understand that? Come on. Come on, verse 42. First Maccabees chapter 12, verse 42. Then the people of Israel began to write in their instruments and contracts. In the first year of Simon, the high priest, the governor and leader of the Jews. So Simon was the governor and he was the leader of the Jews. That's what Simon was. He was the governor and the leader of the Jews. So what was what our forefather Simon doing? Our forefather Simon, he was what? He restored peace in our land among the people. You understand? And we were no longer paying tax and tribute and none of that stuff. All right, read. In those days, Simon came against Gaza and besieged it round about. He made also an engine of war. He did what? And assist. He made also an engine of war. So he says, Our forefather Simon, he made an engine of war. 
you ever watch these movies um troy you see that movie uh lord of the rings you see that movie um gladiator and all of that so you, they call today they call it a trojan horse because in that trojan horse they would use the trojan horse to to bring down the gates of the city and once they they bring down the gates of the city the people came out of that trojan horse and then they invaded the city and destroyed and slew men, women, and children. That is what our forefather Simon did. So today, um, when you look at all the, the wars that were fought and all that, the, this engine of war, he's the one that invented our forefather Simon. Our forefather, he, this, this, this forefather right here, this forefather didn't play games. Understand that thing. He was a man of war. Okay, come on. And they that were in the engine leaped into the city whereupon. No, no, read verse 43 again. Apologies. First Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 43. In those days, Simon camped against Gaza and besieged it round about. He made also an engine of war and set it by the city and battered a certain tower and took it. You see what they did? So he battered a tower. And then once the, the tower, once the tower was destroyed with the with this engine of war, what happened next? Verse 44. And they that were in the engine leaped into the city. Whereupon there was a great uproar in the city. You see that thing? So after they destroyed the tower, remember at this point, what is Simon doing? He's in Gaza. Guess where? Gaza Strip. <laughs> you see what's going on right now in, in Gaza Strip with Hamas, the Palestinians? the Palestinian Arab and the white people that call themselves Jews, Amalek in Jerusalem. The Gaza here is the same Gaza that we, we see on the news now. You understand? Really? In so much as the people of the city rent their clothes and climbed upon the walls with their wives and children and cried with a loud voice, besieging Simon to grant them peace. You see what Simon was doing? Simon was destroying. You understand why? Because these cities like Gaza, that's, that, that was ours. You understand? We were taking those cities back because we own those cities. You understand? So from the wilderness, actually, you know what? Let's read about that because I know some of you might be, huh? Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. This is what Moses said when he was telling us what the kingdom of heaven is. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 21. Read. That your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. As the days of heaven upon the earth. So now Moses is going to tell us when he says that the days of heaven upon the earth is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As your days of heaven, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Because the kingdom of heaven will be established here on earth, as it is already in heaven. Meaning rulership of empires here on earth. Because when you look at our people, we are the only nation on earth that is what? Fighting for equality and equal rights. Listen, have you ever seen uh, the Indians, East Indians, marching for equality? You ever seen the Chinese marching for equality? You ever seen the Arabs marching for equality? Never. The only people that you see marching for equality is us. And guess what? The Lord says he gave us all nations on earth for us to rule over them and for them to be our servants. But we are marching for equality. When you examine the history, there's never been a point in history where all nations were equal. Never. Never. There was always the ruling class. There was always the serving class. And guess what? We are the ruling class. But right now, we are at the bottom because we broke the commandments of the Most High. But we are coming back. We're getting the flavor back. Okay? Read on. Verse 22 now. Come on. Verse 22. Read. Right? For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you, to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Read. Right? Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations 
and mightier than yourselves. You see what Moses is telling us? This is the kingdom of heaven right here. It says, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. China, India, Saudi Arabia, America. But America is going to be wiped out on that day. We're never going to be there no more. Okay, Europe. All these great kingdoms, we're going to take them down, all of them. The same way we took down Canaan, the Canaanites in our land, we want to do the same to all these nations this day when the Lord returns. Go ahead. Verse 24. Read. Every place whereupon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. So now the Lord is going to give, Moses is going to give us the map of our, the, the primary, our, the head, let's call it headquarters, the HQ, the Holy Land, where the Palestinians and the white people are fighting for, which is not their land, that's our land. You understand? Now he's going to give you the map of where, where the Holy Land is and where the chosen land that the Lord has chosen for his people, the 12 tribes of Israel, he's going to give you the map right here in verse 24. Pay close attention. Verse 24 again. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 24. Every place whereupon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Read. From the wilderness and Lebanon. From the what? From the from the wilderness and Lebanon. The wilderness. The wilderness is Gaza. The Gaza Strip. You understand? When we left Egypt, we were in the wilderness when we crossed. When we crossed Jordan. You understand? So the wilderness, that's Gaza. That Gaza Strip, that's the wilderness. When you look at the map, the map of Africa, you see when you go to Jerusalem and all that, you see, you see, uh, you see Gaza. That's the wilderness. That's why... Simon, go back to First Maccabees now. First Maccabees chapter 13. Okay. First Maccabees chapter 13. What verse do we have? Chapter 13. Read verse 45 again. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 45. Read. In so much as the people of the city rent their clothes and climbed upon the walls with their wives and children and cried with a loud voice. Be teaching Simon to grant them peace. So now the people that was in Gaza, jump up to the 43, because that's where uh, Gaza is mentioned. You understand? First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 43. In those days, Simon camped against Gaza. Read. And besieged it round about. He made also an engine of war and set it by the city and battered a certain tower and took it. So Gaza is the wilderness in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 24. That's the Gaza Strip. That's also part of our land that the Most High God promised unto us. So now in that land, there was the Greeks that were staying there, white people. Today the Palestinians and Amalek, white people. Go back, verse 45 again. Verse 45. In so much as the people of the city rent their clothes and climbed upon the walls with their wives and children, and cried with a loud voice, beseeching Simon to grant them peace. You really have to imagine the sight here. It says, when Simon came to take the to take to to take over the city, which is ours anyway, it says, in so much as the people of the city rent their clothes and climbed upon the walls with their wives and children. You really need to imagine people just running, you understand, women holding their skirts, jumping on my fancy. Listen, that is what was going on when Simon showed up on the scene. Okay? We put our enemies to flight. You understand? Come on. And they said, deal not with us according to our wickedness, mm. but according to thy mercy. You see what he's saying? He says, deal not with us according to our wickedness, because they know that they were wicked. But according to thy mercy, now they are begging for mercy. They should. And they are going to beg for mercy when the Lord returns. Read on. So Simon was appeased toward them and fought no more against them, but put them out of the city and cleansed the houses wherein the idols were and so gathered into it with songs and thanksgiving. No, no. He said, and so entered into it with songs and thanksgiving. So when Simon kicked the heathens out, you understand? And he took their idols because when they were in the land, they were practicing idolatry. Like today, if you look at the land today in Israel, 
You see what's going on today in Israel? Give me that in Revelation 2, verse 9. Very quick. I'm going to show you something. Revelation 2, verse 9. In the land of Israel today, there are two nations that are fighting for a land that doesn't belong to either of them. Okay? That's why today there's bombs going on in Gaza, okay, and in Israel. Revelation 2, verse 9. Watch this. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So the people that are in the land today calling themselves Jewish, they are not the Jews. They are the synagogue of Satan. Watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Because those people in our land today, who are they? Because yes, they are white people. They are all Edomites. But we need to understand who we actually, where, who do they descend from? Because Esau, they descend from Esau. But let's investigate which son they descend from. Give me Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 5. Come on. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, uh -huh. a certain priest named Zacharias, of the, of the course of Abiah. Wait. And, and his wife was of the daughter of Herod, and her name was Elizabeth. So now, read that part again. Read it again. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. It was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. Stop right there. A certain... It says there was in the days of Herod, Herod, the king of Judea. Who is Herod? And Herod is saying the king of Judea. Herod. Let's go to the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. I'm going to read on, I'm going to read page 224. It says, Herod, Idumean rulers of Palestine, 47 BC to AD 79. Line started with Antipater, whom Julius Caesar made procurator of Judea in 47 BC. So Herod was an Idumean, okay? Herod was not an Israelite. Herod was an Idumean. Watch this. Let's get the definition of the word Idumean. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary on page 239. Idumean. Pertaining to Edom. Greek and Roman name for Edom. So Herod was a white man. He was a Roman. He was set up by who? He was set up by Julius Caesar. You understand? So Herod was the king of Judea. How was Herod the king of Judea? Because Herod was set up by Rome to be over us. Because during one time, when the time when Christ walked the earth, who was ruling? Rome was ruling. So the people that you see in the land of Israel today, this is their forefathers here. These are their forefathers. So those are Jewish converts. Those are converts. They converted to Judaism. So today, those same white people today in our land, these are their forefathers. Because Herod converted to Judaism. You understand? And then threw down the lineage of Herod Agrippa and all of that. Agrippa and Bernice. All of those, those are the, those, that's the lineage of Herod. So the people you see today, those are the children of Herod. Those are the descendants of Herod. Those people that you see today in our land, calling themselves Jewish. You understand? Those are bastards over there. That's Amalek. They've always wanted the land of Israel. From the time of judges, they've always wanted the land of Israel. Until this day. And they have it now. Now they are kicking the Palestinians out. You know why they want to kick the Palestinians out? Because remember, the Palestinians also, they are saying, that's our land. Why are they saying that? Remember, the Palestinians, hmm, let me see if I want to go into that history now. Mm. Listen, that, I'll just put it like this. The Palestinians, they entered into that land in 1854, in the 1300s, in the 14th century. 1854 as the Ottoman Turks. Those were the, that's the part of the Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire, they also, they took that land of Israel and they've been occupying it since 1854. You understand? So now the Palestinians, they don't want to leave because they said, that's our land. 
because we are the seed of Abraham through Ishmael. If so, the white people, Amalek, they are saying, mm -mm, we are the seed of we are the seed of Isaac. So that's our land. None of them belong on that land. That's ours. You understand? That's a topic for another day. Okay. Um, go back to First Maccabees chapter thirteen, verse forty-seven. First Maccabees chapter thirteen, verse forty-seven. Uh huh. So Simon was appeased toward them and fought no more against him, but put them out of the city and cleansed the houses wherein the idols were, and so entered into it with songs and thanksgiving. Because the 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 Amalek, you understand the Greeks, the Greeks had what? Because that was Amalek. They always wanted our land, so he kicked them out. So. What was they doing? They were defiling it. They were practicing idolatry. You understand? So when our forefather Simon, when he came in and kicked them out, he says, so entered into it with songs and thanksgiving. Well, that's very important right there. Why is he saying that? Watch this. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 47, in the Apocrypha. Sirach 47 and verse 8. Sirach 47, verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 8. Mm -hmm. In all his works, he praised the Holy One, Most High, with words and with words of glory. Talking about David. This is King David. They're talking about King David here. Go ahead. With his whole heart, he sung songs and loved him that made him. So King David was a what? He was good with a note. He says, with, with, with his whole heart, he sang songs and loved him that made him, meaning the most high. Go ahead, watch this. He said, singers also before the altar, that by their voices, that my, they might make sweet melody and daily sing, and daily sing praises in their songs. You see that thing? And daily sing praises in their songs. So them, them, them singing praises daily in their songs, to glorify the most high God, that was to bring forth what healing and cleansing in the what in the temple because uh, the heathens were what they were defiling it with their idols and all that. Watch this. Give me the book of first Samuel. First Samuel chapter first Samuel chapter 16 and verse 18. This is when Saul, the spirit of the spirit, the, the evil spirit jumped upon Saul. Now King David had to play. Uh, the harp because it was good with the musical instrument. Okay, First Samuel chapter sixteen, three verse fourteen. First Samuel, the sixteen verse fourteen. Read. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. You see that thing? The spirit, the, meaning the 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 spirit of the Lord, the righteous spirit departed from Saul, and an evil spirit jumped upon Saul, and it was troubling him. Go ahead. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. You see that thing? Even the people could see he's troubled, with an, he's troubled by an evil spirit. Watch this. Read on, verse 16. Verse 16. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on, a, on an harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play it with his hand, and thou shalt be well. You see that thing? So music is, is music heals. Listen, music heals. You see that part? It says, um, it says, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Meaning what? You are going to heal. Watch this. Jump down to verse 23. Here's another thing, by the way. I want to show you, you know what? No, 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 not today. Read verse 23. Watch this. Verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. You see that thing? Because music heals. Music is a healing, is a healing. Music is a spirit. That brings forth healing. Because when you notice, you look at our, our people, especially the brothers, you understand they are into hip hop and all of that. 
they are always thinking about bees and holes, killing guns and all of that. The, chance, the likelihood of them ending up in jail, killing, raping, murdering, and rob robbing, they are very high. Why? Because if, if you are not, if, if, if the music you are listening to, because it's a spirit, if the mu music you are listening to is not to edify you, guess what it's doing? It's corrupting you. Because evil communications corrupt good manners. Watch this. Go back to Sarah 47, read verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 9. He said, Sing us also before the altar, that by their voices they might make sweet melody, and daily sing praises in their songs. And daily did what? And daily sing praises in their songs. No, daily sing about guns and, and, and hope. Sing praises in their songs. You see, daily sing, sing, sing what? Sing praises or sing about guns, hoes, and drugs, and and in jail. Read that part again. And daily do what? And daily sing praises in their songs. And daily sing praises in their songs. Daily sing praises. Not about guns. Not about drug dealing. Not about being in jail. Not about raping, murdering, and robbing, and killing. No. Daily sing praises in their songs. So that's why today you see um, Sony BMG you see all these music, uh, you know, these uh, record label companies and all of that. They give young black men money to sing about what? To sing about bees and hoes. Your cut by your vest and all of that. Those are not good for our people. They, they, their music vexes the spirit. That, their music is not building the nation. They are, you see young kids, 13 years old, talking about bees and hoes. Where do they get that stuff from? The music that these demons are pushing out. So our job, brothers, those of you that are musically inclined, we need to put we need to put good music out. You understand? To daily what you sing praises in your song. Give me Colossians three, Colossians chapter three verse fifteen. Okay. Colossians chapter three, verse sixteen. Start at verse sixteen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. That the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Come on. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You see that thing? Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Is a teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So the whole book of Psalms is about what? These are songs. You understand? And hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. So go back to First Maccabees chapter 13. Okay, verse 47 again. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 47. Read. Right. So Simon was appeased toward them and fought no more against them, but put them out of the city and cleansed the houses wherein the idols were. And so into, into it with songs and thanksgiving. You see that thing for what? To bring forth healing because music is a, is a, is a healing spirit. Music is a healing spirit. Give me that in First Chronicles. There's another one in Chronicles. Give me that in First Chronicles 25. In First Chronicles, that's the one right there. First Chronicles 25 and 1. Watch this. First Chronicles 25 verse 1. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jeduthun, who should who should prophesy with harps and psalteries and with cymbals and with and the number of the workmen according to their service was. You see that thing? So now David is set apart the, what, the sons of Asaph to bring forth music. He says, we should prophesy with hearts. So when you play music, that's prophecy right there with salty. But the songs is not talk about these songs, you know, hell song. No, no, no. Joyous celebration. Hell no. No. None of those songs. The songs that they're supposed to sing about is what? We are the children of Israel. We must be delivered from our enemies. 
Those are spiritual songs. Not all nations can be saved. We are all one rainbow nation. That's not in the Bible. Okay? That's not in the Bible. Who should prophesy with harp, with psalteries, with and with symbols? You see that thing? That's how our forefathers prophesied. Our foremothers, they prophesied with songs. Songs that will edify you according to the scriptures. Okay? Go back to First Maccabees 13, verse 48 now. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 48. Yea, he put all uncleanness out of it, and placed such men there as would keep the law, and made it stronger than it was before, and built therein a dwelling place for himself. You see that thing? So he, he says, so and so he says, so entered into it with songs and thanksgiving. The spiritual songs to bring forth healing to get rid of the demons of the idols that the, the heathens were worshipping when they were occupying the land. You understand? That's why he did that. That's why verse 48, read verse 48 again. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 48. Yea, he put all uncleanness out of it and placed such men there as would keep the law and made it stronger than it was before and built therein a dwelling place for himself. Read. They also of the tower in Jerusalem were kept so straight that they could neither come forth nor go into the country, nor buy nor sell. Wherefore, they were in great distress for want of victuals, and a great number of them perished through famine. You see that thing? So though the was relative, remember in Gaza, he had what? He put the heathens to flight. You understand? But now in Jerusalem. There was what? There was other white people that was there that he what he decided to do. He decided to starve them. Meaning there was a siege. You understand? There was a siege. So what was going on is that they could not buy, they could not sell, so they didn't have food. So many of them died through what? Through famine. They died through hunger, starvation. You know? Then cried they to Simon, beseeching him to be at one with them, Ray? which thing he granted them. And when he had put them out from thence, he cleansed the tower from pollution. You see that thing? So they begged for mercy. You understand? He says, then cried they to Simon, beseeching him to be at one with them. When he had mercy on us, which thing granted he, he, he granted them that, okay, when he put them out from, from them, he cleansed the tower from pollution. Because the heathen was polluting the temple. You understand? Read on. And entered into it the three and twentieth day of the second month. Stop right there. Okay. It says, and entered into it. It says, and entered into it the three and twentieth day of the second month. Go ahead. And entered into it the three and twentieth day of the second month. In the hundred seventy and first year, with thanksgiving and branches of palm trees and with harps and cymbals and with vials and hymns and songs, because there was destroyed a great enemy out of Israel. You see that thing? Because there was destroyed a great enemy out of Israel, the Greeks. So he was putting the Greeks out. He was putting them out. You understand? Because remember... Demetrius had a league with him. So Demetrius didn't have a problem with what Simon was doing. And also, if he, say he was having objections, Simon was like, let's go to war. The hell is that? Okay? So he was putting the heathen out and cleansing the temples and the sanctuaries and restoring peace and getting access to the land that was taken by who? By Paul. You understand? That's what he was doing. So, but I want to show you here, this is a year later, okay? Because, read verse 41, First Maccabees 13, verse 41, watch this. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 41. 13, 41, read that. First book of Maccabees chapter 13, verse 41. Thus the yoke of the heathen was taken away from Israel in the hundred 
in the 170th year. You see that thing? In the 170th year. Now, read verse 40, read verse 61 now. And entered into it the three and 20th day of the second month in the 170 and first year. You see that thing? In the 170 and first year. So now this is a year, a year later. You understand? Because remember, he had to deal with Gaza, okay? He was coming down, Jerusalem also, to deal with what? To get the heathen out. So when he ordained, when our forefathers ordained the 23rd day of the second month as the day of Simon, that was a year later now. After the, the temples were cleansed, the heathens were kicked out. You understand? Some were put to death, okay? And then they ordained this day that, a great enemy has been put out of this. You understand that? Read on. In the hundred and seventy and first year, with thanksgiving and branches of palm trees and with harps and cymbals and with vials and hymns and songs, because they was destroyed a great enemy out of Israel. Come on, watch this. He ordained also that that day should be kept every year with gladness. What did he say? He ordained also that that day should be kept every year with gladness. He said he ordained that that day, which is the day we are observing, he should be kept every year with gladness. Go ahead. Moreover, the hill of the temple that was by the tower, he made stronger than it was. A and they and they he dealt himself with his, with company. Come on. And they he dealt himself with his company. And when Simon saw that John his son was a valiant man, he made him captain of all the host, and he dealt in Gazara. 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 Okay. So Simon took his son. He was looking at his son. He saw his son is a valiant man. He's courageous. He says he made him captain of all the hosts. And he dwelt in Gazara. So this is the history of the day of Simon. You understand? Our forefather Simon, he fought for his nation. He restored peace in the nation. We were no longer paying tax. We we're no longer paying tribute. None of that stuff. And he got access to the land that was occupied by the heathen. He kicked them out. You understand? And he restored dignity and honor to the nation of Israel. You understand? So this is a glorious, beautiful history right here. This is a history you're not going to learn this in the Christian church. Never. You're not going to learn this with T.D. Jakes. You're not going to learn this with Bushiri uh, or Boro. They're not going to teach you this stuff. Because those are not the men of the law. You understand? Those are pimps. Uh -huh. Those are pimps. They have nothing to do with the Bible. They just want to eat off of the people. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me first uh, give me that in First Corinthians. We're gonna break bread, okay? I'm gonna end the class right here. All right. In the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when He laid down His life for us, that we also may have life this day. First Corinthians 11 verse 23. For I have received of the law that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which He was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the law. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that class. All praise to the Most High.